We're running down on time, and you've agreed to come back on in the future on science issues. It's just amazing having you. Uh, but I will be broiled and skewered and, 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 and drawn and quartered and hung and, and then tanned if I don't bring this up. Because we talk about hoaxes. We have this giant government hoax of global warming uh, right now, clearly trying to get control. Now, uh, before I ask this, I want to say I have a friend, Raymond Teague, who worked on the main Mission control on repeated Apollos, ran RCA cameras and then RCA cameras on Skylab. And I've known Raymond for 14 years, and he says the whole thing's real, none of it's faked, you know, the whole nine yards, and I know he's the real deal. I have other people I know being here in Texas who worked on the mission, and they say if there was any chicanery, then they were conning us too, and that's pretty darn hard to do. Forty years later, and I never really cover this issue, but I get calls every day, emails about it, TV shows everywhere. What is your take on the the uh, people more and more believing? Uh, I've seen polls as high as thirty percent that aspects of the whole thing was faked. Well, I think in a serious vein, uh, it is a uh, another reflection on the government-run school system. Uh, that system does not teach history. Uh, uh, there are several generations now who have come through it. Uh, that have had very little exposure to American history or world history in an objective way. And, uh, and I, it just, right now you have a population that, uh, uh, has not learned, uh, uh, the complexities that were, had to be dealt with in order to put human beings on the moon. Uh, also, uh, you have people, uh, who just for their own, uh, enjoyment, I guess, uh, like <laughs> to, uh, uh, like to talk about conspiracy. And then finally, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people don't trust their government anymore. And but in a way that, I mean, that's a positive thing to not be totally trusting. The founders said that. I think a lot of it's so much government lying. People are so untrusting now, they don't even trust me on a lot of issues. I mean, people don't trust their neighbors. And uh, society does seem to be degenerating a bit. My only issue is that said that I know people that worked on the mission who say it was absolutely real, and I, you can watch famous films of them in Mission Control. People I know, they're not making it up. Uh, and you, you, for a conspiracy like that to work, uh, you would have to uh, have uh, conned uh, 450,000 Americans. Because that's how many worked on the program. That's how many worked, and I, you just couldn't do it. And look, you, people have to remember that they're still... Uh, when you have a population of the world as large as we have, uh, a very, very micro percentage is still a significant number. And some of those people actually still believe the Earth is flat. Uh, so if a few of them want to believe that we didn't go to the moon, let them. Uh, it's not an issue that comes up in my presentation. And, uh, you well, well, I mean, the, I mean, the, I mean, the Earth being flat—that that's clearly ridiculous. Though I've actually been contacted by some flat earthers saying I'm covering up the fact that it's. It's some Atlantean conspiracy, but but the reason I mean, obviously, you know, this is this has been building. I would imagine you get asked that sometimes because there are issues that make people question. And so, let me just throw a few of those out to you. Wait, uh, wait, a, wait a minute. The, the, I think there are more important things to talk about. But just let me say that when I'm out talking to the public, I do not get that question. I only get that question from talk show hosts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so really, but, but, that's true. And so I think we ought to spend our time on more important issues. Okay, why haven't we, why haven't we been uh, back to the moon in forty years? Well, it, that's a really long topic, but uh, the most immediate is that even though George Bush, George W. Bush, uh, articulated a very good return to the moon and on beyond uh, policy, neither his uh, budget office or the Congress properly funded that. Had it been properly funded, we will be we would be well on our way as we speak. But in the absence of adequate funding, uh, we have had to flip schedules in order to keep the program alive. Yeah. Now you have an administration that for all indications is not going to pursue uh, a uh, aggressive uh, role for the United States uh, in deep space. And they're going to leave that to the Chinese uh, potentially the Indians and the Japanese, and maybe Europe. Uh, uh, and that, I think, is an extraordinary mistake. It's as big a mistake in the long term as we could make uh, relative to protecting liberty here on this planet. Sure. You have non-democratic regimes 
uh, dominant in deep space, dominant on the moon and elsewhere, then it's going to be very, very difficult to continue to protect liberty on this uh, planet. Sure. Have you heard of a... I mean, I guess you were in the Senate around that time. Dr. Bob Bowman, who worked on some of the Star Wars program before it was declassified in the, in the early 80s, and he's saying, and he's told me, he said, look, Alex, not only is there a space program, but there's a lot of it you don't know about, and I can't tell you about it, but he's mentioned a few things that have slipped out or been declassified, you know, the whole robotic program, uh, and they admit that a lot of the shuttles been military secret missions. Oh, no. Uh, not, not a lot. There have been a few Air Force missions that are, uh, are missions of the space shuttle in which there were uh, some classified payloads. But it, it, you shouldn't yeah. not. The shuttle, uh, air, all the shuttle flights, except with very few exceptions, have been purely civilian flights. Sure. You did a lot of the uh, photography on the moon, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Well, both Gene Cernan and I uh, had cameras and... Uh, uh, we took a lot of the pictures. I happened to uh, be more active in taking pictures of the Earth as we went towards the moon. And so that uh, full Earth... But you that, took the famous blue marble photo, didn't you? The full Earth that shows the continent of Africa in its entirety. Yeah, that's one I took. I was about 34,000 miles away from Earth when I snapped that. Now, again, uh, because people kill me if I don't ask, where are the stars? Is it because the moon's, I mean, the Earth's so bright that it, that it blots those out? Yes, it's the same problem you have on a on a sunny day here on Earth of seeing stars. There's uh, just too much light for a, a wonderful optical system we call our eyes uh, to uh, to handle. Uh, the the eyes are great, but they do not have what scientists call the dynamic range to see both the bright surfaces and stars. Well, that's like when the moon is uh, up at night, you can't see stars anywhere around it, right? That's correct. Same thing. The moon. Uh, it just dominates the uh, the eye, and the yeah. and the eye doesn't close down enough, doesn't close the iris enough to see the stars. Well, I know we've got advanced technologies, and I know the A bomb and the hydrogen bomb and the superconducting super colliders are real, and I know that there are some space plane programs, even if you say there aren't, um, a, a, a Doctor Schmidt, uh, that are going on, and so that's why I believe in our potential. And I want to believe we went to the moon, and I believe you, uh, you know, when you sit here, I mean, you sound very credible to me. I, I just, you say you don't get asses on the street. People are probably scared to ask you. The, the, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it all over the news. Oh, no, no, no. The American people are never scared to ask anybody a question. <laughs> believe me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, certainly you know it's a big, I mean, it's, it's becoming a bigger controversy, and that's why I brought it up. Uh, I understand. You all, You have to deal with it. Fortunately, I don't. Well, I mean, I know you're right about the global warming being a hoax, and, I mean, there is government and corporations engaged in a hoax. So I think that's, I mean, how do we fix this crisis of confidence? Because it's even happening not just with the government. As you know, it's happening with people in business now. Uh, how, how do we fix that? Well, uh, I think you fix it by, uh, again, people of common sense taking back control of their government and making them right and getting good people uh, to run yeah. for office. Uh, I personally would like to see term limits, but uh, you're never going to get the Congress to do it. That's something the states are going to have to do if we're ever going to have a constitutional amendment. Uh, the founders yeah. just didn't un just didn't realize that uh, uh, their credit their successors would make a career out of going into politics. It was yeah. not on the on their uh, visible horizon. Sure, we only had about two and a half minutes left, Doctor Schmidt. One word to describe what it's like to be. 400,000 miles away or less from the Earth. One word to describe standing on another planet. Privilege. I was greatly honored and privileged to have an opportunity to do it, as were all of my colleagues. We were just the tip of the spear. Uh, uh, 450,000 Americans held that spear, and uh, we just represented them on the moon, but they made it happen. And that is my last question on the issue, and then I won't ever bring it up to you again, I promise, on a, if you join us again. How did the film make it back through the Van Allen radiation belt? Well, that belt's not that, it doesn't have that much radiation. Uh, if, if it was going to damage the film, it would have damaged us. <laughs> there, it, there's, there is radiation there, and if you lingered in it uh, over time, you could accumulate a, a dose that could be a problem. But uh, we went through it so fast that there wasn't any significant dose on the film or on us. Yeah. 
Well, you know what's neat? We're starting to see space tourism. If they'd really give us a space program, I can, you know, some of us could live long enough to actually go to the moon. But pretty soon they'll say the moon doesn't exist, and maybe it's made out of cheese. Uh, let me tell you, Mr. Schmidt, uh, Dr. Schmidt, Return to the Moon is the book. He's out there exposing global warming uh, as the uh, fraud it is, man-made global warming. Uh, is there any websites to fire out, sir, or uh, any other info? No, I think if people uh, look at the, the book, Return to the Moon, they'll uh, know what the future will be and how the... Yeah, I'd like to have you back up in the next few months to just talk about the book itself and uh, more about the moon. And, and, and thank you for uh, entertaining those uh, those questions. Uh, let me say bye to you here at the end. Retransmission starts now. Infowars.com.